Welcome, one and all, to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast for a very interesting discussion. Breaking news, is it? We don't know yet. Adam Cole, is he leaving WWE? Is he not? We don't know. He is the name that's on everybody's lips in the world of wrestling right now. And considering Bray Wyatt just got released, that means Adam Cole, well done to you, sir. You're doing something very, very right. So, Adam Cole, where is he going? There's a lot of possibilities here. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of different choices that he could make. The one that we got to keep in mind, though, A, his significant other is in AEW. B, the Vince McMahon Jedi mind trick. I don't think people are quite acknowledging just how powerful that is. And really, let's be frank, what I suspect that is, is, uh, yeah, that, that, that'll that persuade anybody when you see those dollar signs in your eyes. But, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I'm going to hand it over to one Tony G to give his thoughts on this. Tony, what are your thoughts on everything that we know thus far, T? Hey everybody, this is Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. Just wanted to take a minute quick and check in with you. We've had these crazy stories dropping for the better part of a month now, where WWE releases are happening, people are asking for their releases, you know, Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt being the two big ones, former Universal and World Champs, that's insane enough. Ric Flair was granted his release just yesterday, which is pretty surprising. And these are all guys people kind of expect to end up in AEW if they don't immediately find their way back into WWE somehow. This is another big one. Um, apparently, Adam Cole's contract is coming to an end either before or after SummerSlam. And we're knocking on the heels of that thing. Apparently, he has a no-compete clause that's just gone. There's no 90 day there. There's no 60 or 30 day. He can just do whatever he wants. That's massive. Adam Cole, the poster child of NXT, could be gone, potentially, unless he decides to stick around. Uh, granted, NXT is not what it was a couple of years ago. It's just not. And AEW is looking a little bit more lucrative than for sure NXT. I mean, look what they're doing with Karrion Cross. Still the champ and he's being jobbed out on Raw. It's ridiculous. I don't know what to think of this. Uh, this would be a big get for AEW. You know, he's probably got enough mileage that this would be a big deal for them to get him. He's a big enough name. He's a good enough. He's, he's a great talent. This would be huge for them. Uh, and given with all the other expected signings of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and potentially a Braun Strowman, Ric Flair, Bray Wyatt, the star power is getting more and more intense over there. But uh, I don't know what to expect here. I kind of expect that he's going to re-sign with NXT. But the, again, this is a guy we kind of expected like a year or more, like two years ago. We really thought the Undisputed Era was going to get an, a main roster call-up. That just didn't happen. Maybe he's not happy. You know, his wife's over there, Britt Baker. Maybe he's ready to move along because... I wouldn't want to join the Raw or SmackDown roster if I'm him. He's going to be undersized. He'll get a lot more freedom in AEW, and he'll be a lot more, uh, not to say blend in, but size-wise, it'd be a lot better fit. I don't know. This could go either way, but I do, at the moment, expect him to re-sign with WWE. And speaking of SummerSlam, here we go again. Just when we got crowds back, not that it made Raw any more watchable yet. There is talk of it potentially being off. I don't know if this is going to happen. This is going to... This, this is big. I think that they're probably going to go and push through with this. Fingers crossed. But with COVID restrictions being the big thing now, SummerSlam's in danger. We ran into this with WrestleMania 36, and it was a devastating blow. Is this the start of it again? I don't think so. I think we'll see SummerSlam go off without too big of a hitch, maybe some restrictions, but then after that, it's looking very, very likely that WWE moves the live shows, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, NXT, all back to the Performance Center with the Thunderdome until they can find another home for it. So that's what we're expecting, and I can't say I'm thrilled. Uh, wrestling, we thought it was back finally. 
We thought we were getting a bit of a resurgence. <sighs> this is just another devastating blow. So keep an eye on this. Make sure to like, share, subscribe right here to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. We'll keep you informed. We'll keep you up to date. And we will give you the news that we have when it becomes available. Thanks for stopping. Thank you, that. Tony G. Always amazing analysis as always. To me, I think where whether he's going to stay or go, you got you have to look at it several different things. One, his really sad reaction when he heard that uh, Tyler Breeze had been released. That was one where he's like, ah, really, really. He was not happy about that. You could see his live reaction on YouTube, and it was not a happy one. Then all you have to do is look at how pretty much any NXT great with the exception of Kevin Owens is treated on the main roster. I mean, I mean, okay. Seth Rollins also gets his proper due, but he was in NXT before NXT was really NXT, but just look at, Oh, I don't know. Karrion Cross, Keith Lee, Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, like you, Bo Dallas, I mean, you can just keep going. Uh, Finn Balor, you can look at some of the greats of NXT and they just do not get the love. Uh, the the War Viking Raider machine experience uh, from another dimension. I mean, Adam Cole will be lucky if he makes it to the main roster and Vince just says, we got this great gimmick for you. It's called Tom thumb and uh let's see to give you some character let's uh make you an oil rig worker in newfoundland and yeah you're way up north most of the year and you come down to wrestle in the ring once the snow melts there we go we th this is gonna give you some character adam cole can't see why he wouldn't sign on for that so uh, i yeah that and bray wyatt gets released you think Adam Cole has job security? No, no. Especially if he doesn't have a contract that doesn't have that 90 day out that they have where they can just review it every 90 days. So yeah, Bray's gone. So, and also I've heard that Bruce Pritchard, John Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon, they've all kind of gotten together and they've made this decision of they don't want any more short guys and they don't want anybody in their thirties. So I'm afraid, like Adam Cole, it, you can always say this about the guy, like he's got everything but size. I mean, here's the thing, like wrestlers are an unusually tall breed of folk. Like, let's just be frank. Most wrestlers are just going to be a bit taller than average because that's the appeal. Uh, like, I think it was, oh goodness, what was his name? Um, I want to say uh, Bill Watts. I, he was the one who said, big athletic men draw. Just big athletic people draw. So that's one of the things that wrestling always gravitates to. That's why Andre the Giant is so loved. Adam Cole is, is actually probably slightly larger than average size. But just in the world of wrestling, he's like, what? You're an average sized mortal? Why? How could we ever use that to gain sympathy in a storyline? Oh, wait. So, yeah, to me, I think this is a very interesting crossroad for this man because there's two options here. He can go to AEW, gamble on himself, but he's gambling on himself. His significant other is an AEW. She's making good money. But this is that moment where is Vince and the machine actually going to get behind you? And if you walk away now, that machine isn't going to get behind you the same way that it did before. So this is a very tough, agonizing moment for this man. I can only assume his contract expires at the end of this month and there's no compete clause. He has a no, no compete clause that he has to worry about. Normally, uh, like Bray Wyatt has to sit for 90 days. Now, you know, don't get me wrong. When you get laid off in WWE, in the 90 day no compete, you are getting paid your full contract those 90 days. So, you know, it, uh, 
Well, I mean, not your full contract, but your agreed amount over those 90 days. So, yeah, Gallows and Anderson would be like, wait, what? What? Hey, we, we, we got, really? Is that, is that the deal? Then we got some, no, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. But yeah, so that is what we have going forward for one Adam Cole. Uh, apparently Pete Dunn's contract is going to be coming up at the end of September, but he'll also have the 90 day no compete. So we won't be seeing him on AEW television until like November or Christmas, possibly, depending on how contract negotiations takes. So I think really Adam Cole, I don't know how you did it, but your name is now the buzz of everybody in the industry. And I think it is going to revitalize, revitalize his career regardless of which direction he goes. Much like Randy Orton, when just the mere speculation of is Randy Orton going to go to AEW? Just getting those juices flowing in people's minds. That was what really got Randy Orton back in people's attention. So yeah, I really see this as a huge opportunity for Adam Cole, no matter which way it goes. And if I was him, even if I was going to sign with WWE, I'm like, well, sorry. Uh, I mean, Vince, I'll keep this between you and me. Like I'm going to sign this contract in a week or two. But I'm going to let this just beautiful speculation simmer. I'm sorry. The whole wrestling world is talking about me. And when I sign on the dotted line for you, that all changes. So we got a couple weeks to work with this. So let's just go with this. Now, I know you're just thinking, well, just sign a contract between you and me. Well, somebody's going to know. And there's the three best ways to let a secret out. Telephone, telegraph, tell a wrestler. So that's, I, I totally understand Adam Cole's perspective. But folks, this has been just a little examination into the world that is professional wrestling contract negotiation. Ah, the romantic world that is. So folks, as I'm known to say around here, all that being said, Thank you for joining us here at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE. You can find me at KOE Nation on YouTube and Twitch. You know it's the right thing to do. That is KOE Nation, YouTube, and Twitch. But be sure to like, share, subscribe right here to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. And also head on over to Big Buck and Empire on YouTube as well. Folks, Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. I hope to find all of you back at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. Happy, healthy, much the wiser. Catch you later, folks. Two here and see if it just if smooths I itself out. Get back. Tell you what I'll do. If I ever get back. I promise to refabricate you Raging rivers of gold That's what the brochure advertised And now we're lost We gotta take it down Let you get slow It's hard to survive Eldorado <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, let's see how that one went. Yeah.